Welcome fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic 90s nerds to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yep, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon Slime to horror movie slashers, but plenty of stuff in between too. But you might see my shirt today and think, oh, she must be talking 90s. I don't mean to fool you. I just wanted to wear this shirt. Reptar, Reptar, gotta find that Reptar. It's an awesome regret shirt from when I was legit like eight years old. I somehow still fit in it. It's a little weird, but uh, I love this shirt. And since it's literally retro, I was like, I'm gonna wear it just cause I never hardly ever wear it because it's very small. <laughs> I'm not eight years old anymore. But anyway, I just wanted to show off the shirt. Today is not 90s. It is a horror book themed video specifically, and I'm actually kind of excited about it. It's going to be my August TBR video, where I'm gonna go through with you the titles that I plan to read for August. I can't wait. So right after this short intro, we'll come right back and we'll dig right in and I'll show you the titles I plan to read. See you soon. <laughs> And this wasn't on purpose, but I actually wrote any notes I needed to refer to on a run and stimpy notepad. And that wasn't on purpose, like I said, it was just a coincidence. So more 90s themed stuff, but you guys don't necessarily get to see it, so I decided to show it to you. Cool run and stimpy space themed notepad paper. Don't peek at my notes though, just look at the cool designs. Okay, so let's get into the TBR. So. I kind of decided to do a theme for August because I actually did a theme for almost all of my July reading and I loved it. I had so much fun. So for July, almost everything I read was summer camp horror themed. So I really just had a blast doing that specific theme. And I started off not doing it on purpose, but then I started to read books like I read Kill River, Under the Blade, and then also Goosebumps, Welcome to Camp Nightmare, all in a row. And I was like, wait a second. I wasn't expecting Kill River to take place at summer camp, but it, a lot of it does. So I thought to myself, well, I might as well just do a whole theme now. So I'm going to search out more books that have a summer camp theme. So because that was so much fun for me, I decided to do a similar type of theme for August. So my theme for August is going to be, obviously, I'm still doing summer reads, so it's going to be summer, sharks, and slashers. So I'm continuing on with more slasher reading because a lot of my camp books that I read were actually slasher books. So it was both set at camp but also was a slasher novel. So I'm kind of continuing on with that theme. And July was also the month that I did a summer slasher movie marathon with my friend Kat. It was so much fun and I just want to keep that slasher vibe going into August because summer's not over and it makes me excited for Halloween time because I don't know, for some reason, even though a lot of people associate slashers with summertime, because the, the alliteration, I guess, but just because they go together so well, I kind of associate it with Halloween time, especially because one of my favorite slashers of all time is the movie Halloween. So yeah, to get hyped up, this is kind of my way of getting into the fall mood, even though a lot of these books are probably going to be set in summer. So the reason sharks are a part of my theme is because August 1st marks the start of my shark marathon that I'm doing with my friend Nathaniel Toll, who is the author of the great book Pumpkin Cinema. So he and I are going to watch six shark movies, and we're also going to read two shark-themed books, which I will show you in a second. But that is why sharks are a part of the theme for August. So again, summer, sharks, and slashers. So as long as it has to do with any of those three things, it'll be on my TBR. So I'm excited! So let's go through it. So the first book I'm reading for August, and this isn't in reading order, I won't go in this order, but I'm just going to tell you about this one first. I don't have a physical copy. So my book club voted for Mexican Gothic, and I will insert a picture here. I did not personally vote for it. So when we put up the poll, I voted for The Troop by Nick Cutter. That did not win. It actually lost by only one vote. So it was a very close vote. So Mexican Gothic won, and a lot of people are very excited about it. I gotta say, I know it's like a slow burn gothic type of story, but it gets good and weird near the end. So I'm excited about the weird part. We'll see if I like it. I hope it blows me away and surprises me because I'm kind of trying to keep my hopes low for this. I know a lot of people like it. And if you guys have liked it, please let me know by commenting below if you did or did not like it and why, but no spoilers, please. So that'll be the book I'm reading for my book club for August. So also it has a summary vibe apparently. So that works, or at least I heard it has a summary vibe. So at least that fits in with the summer theme, I hope. 
that is correct. Let's see. If it doesn't, I'll be like bummed, but what can I do? It's from my book club. I'm gonna read it regardless. Next up, I'm excited. I've been wanting to get to this since I found a copy at the used bookstore. This is Halo by Chet Day. And the reason I'm deciding to read this in August, it doesn't really scream summer. It doesn't scream slasher because I don't think it really is technically a slasher. But my friend Kelly, who's on YouTube, I'll link her channel down below in the YouTube depths of hell down there in the description. She's got a great channel and she's also on Instagram under the name Kelly Hooked on Books. She's got a book club called the From Hell Book Club. And so this is their August read. She invited me to the Discord, so I'll be reading this because they're reading it. And I'm going to read it with them, essentially. We all read it at our own pace and just talk about it in the Discord. And actually, so I didn't know this, I peeked at the first page and it takes place in my hometown of New Orleans. So I'm actually extra excited about this and it fits the summer theme because actually the first page it references that it's June. So it's summer. So it works and it references the heat. Now you know it may go through more months. I don't know the time period if it takes place like in a few months or if it takes place like in a week. I don't know the time setting of the book in terms of how fast it goes. However I'm excited about it either way and I'm saying that it fits the summer rule for my theme. So yeah, I can't wait. And I heard crazy things about this. And actually, Will Erickson commented on one of my Instagram posts and said he's interested to hear what I think about this book because it was kind of suggested to do this as one of the paperbacks from hell reprints that Valancourt Books did. But it got turned down because apparently there's too much cruelty in it. So... Honestly, that intrigues me. I know that sounds horrible, like that I'm intrigued by cruelty, but I kind of want to see what he means by that. And so I guess I'll find out very soon in August. Woo! Next up on my August TBR is The Forgotten Island by David Sodegren. I'm so excited about this one because everyone says it's a great horror summer read. And so because of that, I'm thinking it's going to fit in with my theme perfectly. It takes place in Thailand, so it's going to be super hot. It takes place, like, where these two sisters are on vacation, and crazy stuff develops. I actually heard the Horror and 24 book club talk about this recently. They're going to read it in future months, but I want to read it in the summer. I want to read it right now in August, so I'm going to dig in, and if they chat about it, because they actually just had a live stream not too long ago that I was in the chat for, and it was awesome. It was all about The Elementals by Michael McDowell, and since I happened to read that book like three months ago, I was like, I haven't seen anybody really talk about this book in depth on YouTube. I really was interested in tuning in. I'm glad I did, because it was a fun discussion. And so I can't wait to see what they have to say about this, because I will have already read it by the time they do this for their book club. Again, check out Carol Marie Reads on YouTube. That is where the live chat was for The Elementals. And she had a whole bunch of other awesome booktubers join her, like Marcy Reads and a whole bunch of other people. Cameron, I know, was one of them. So I do suggest you guys go check that out. I'll link her channel below, and I'll link The Elementals video below if you guys happen to have read it. That is also a perfect summer read, by the way. If you're looking for something and you haven't read The Elementals, it is a slow burn. It is very subtle at points, but also really cool at other points. So it depends on if you can handle like a slower book. I actually loved it and I think the descriptions of the heat in the book had a lot to do with how much I loved it. I don't know why, I guess because I'm from the south. It actually takes place in Alabama. I live in Louisiana, not that far away obviously from Alabama. So to me it just, I don't know, I could feel it and I was like, yeah, this... This is cool. And it was a different type of kind of gothic haunting novel. It took place like in the sunlight. It took place like with sand and at a beach. It was just very different. I, I loved it. So yeah, go check out their chat on that. Again, Carol Marie Reads. But in terms of this, I can't wait to get to it. So pumped. Heard a lot of good things from a lot of different people. And again, I've been wanting to get to this for months. In fact, I nominated this for a previous month for one of my book club reads, but it didn't win. It almost won. It was like two votes down. But instead, Children of the Dark by Jonathan Jans won. That's okay, because I'm going to get to this on my own, and I'm excited. Next up, to go with my slasher theme, I've got two kind of slashery novels here. I'm going to go into this one in a second because I am so excited about this one and I had never heard about it. I'll tell you about this in a second, okay? All right, but first, we've got The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. Obviously, we're going to have some kind of slashing going on here. This is about a group of survivors who were all the final girl at different 
terrible massacres, essentially. So they're in this support group. They're trying to get over their past trauma together. However, stuff starts to unfold again and bad things start to happen again. So what is going on? Is somebody bad from the past coming back to get the girls from the final girl support group? I don't know. I have to read it to see, to tell you guys what I think. I gotta say, I've seen a lot of differing opinions on this book. Most people love Grady Hendrix. In fact, a lot of people, it's their doorway into horror, especially people who don't really like horror too much. But even people who have really dug Grady Hendrix have actually not liked this from what I have been seeing across booktube. That alone intrigues me because how will I feel about it? I have read two other Grady Hendrix books. I really should read more but I want to read this one since it's brand new and there's so many different opinions out there about it. I just want to form my own very quickly before I read too much about it and then I might spoil it for myself. So yeah, I'm going to check it out for myself and I think it fits the slasher theme. All right, and this one I referenced a few minutes ago saying that I was super, super jazzed about this one, and I am, and you'll see why, and maybe you'll even get excited about it after I read you the back cover and you'll be like, wow, that sounds intriguing. So this is going to be very, very interesting. It kind of gives you a glimpse into the killer's mind. So basically we are reading the book from the killer's perspective and he's just insane. And it talks about, you know, how much he becomes addicted to killing. And it's almost like a drug to him from what I understand from the description. I just can't wait to get into this. It definitely fits the slasher theme. And I want to thank Mystic Mac who follows me on YouTube and commented this book on a previous video of mine. He said, if you're looking for more slasher books, this is a really smart one. So he suggested this to me. Thank you so much, Mystic Mac. I cannot wait to dig into this. And if you guys want to see me vlog this, because I'm playing around with maybe vlogging it, let me know down below in the comments. And maybe I'll do that. And here is the back, like I teased. I am the Sandman. I am the butcher in soft rubber gloves. I am the acrobat called death. I am the fear in the dark. I am the gift of sleep. Psychiatrists write pompous papers on the significance of my crimes. Clairvoyants search for my face in their dreams. Schoolboys speculate on the tortures I am rumored to inflict on women. When I die, I shall return to the world as a fatal disease for which there is no remedy. It would not be a painful or disfiguring disease. No, I've thought about it and I want to be an exotic fever. I will inhabit the bodies of young girls, heat them up until their breasts swell and their faces glow. I will appear suddenly and produce a strikingly beautiful corpse. Yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> Sounds great. Yes. Oh my god, yes. So again, this is The Sandman, and this is by Miles Gibson. I can't wait to dig in. Okay, and I referenced earlier my shark marathon with my good friend Nathan. I can't wait to get into this marathon. The movies are going to be absurd, some of them. Some of them might be actually good as well, but I think... Uh, one or two will be quite absurd. There are movies on the list that I've already seen, including the movie that this book is based on, Jaws 2. So Jaws 2 is on our list, the movie, and so I decided why not read Jaws 2. So I took a peek at the first page, and the cool thing is we do get glimpses into the shark psyche. So this one passage I already read is kind of saying how basically starving she is. She's pregnant, the shark, it's a female shark, from what I gather, and so she's just ravenous. And so I think that's going to make her go after humans. So we'll have to see how this compares to the movie. I am so just pumped up to compare and contrast it with the film. And Nathan's already started, so I'm really behind. But I'm going to start this when we finally get into August. So I'm waiting till actually August hits to go into the shark marathon. So can't wait. This should be a lot of fun. And I heard that this is a lot better than the novel Jaws or at least a little better, which would be good. So I have actually read the book Jaws, and Jaws, the movie, is one of my favorite movies of all time. However, the book leaves a lot to be desired. And that's because there's this whole weird cheating angle where Chief Brody's wife basically has an affair with Hooper. All very weird. Can you even imagine Chief Brody's wife in the movie basically having an affair with Richard Dreyfus? And it is, like, explored like the sexual scenes are like really not graphic but there is some gross stuff described in the sexual scenes and the reason I mention that is because I read Jaws in high school at a Catholic high school and I checked it out from the library and if any of the librarians had actually read it I don't think it would have been in the library so anyway yeah that's why I remember that scene I was like why is this in the library 
it was fun just to know that the movie is so much better than the book. I'm glad I know, and I'd never reread it. So that's why I'm not rereading Jaws or anything for this marathon. But yeah, also there's this whole mafia side story, which really is boring, and it's just not as good. It's just not as good as the film, of course. But we'll see. Is this any better than Jaws? I sure flip and hope so. I'll tell you after I read it. Okay, and a nice little Goosebumps book, Deep Trouble. This is Goosebumps number 19. And although I've been trying to go in order, I have been skipping around here and there for things that fit my themes for certain months. So this fits the shark theme. And I love the cover, by the way. This is a wonderful cover. Look at that hammerhead shark. And he's just swimming unknowingly. And I actually read this one as a kid, but I technically didn't read it. I listened to it. I had a little audio cassette of this one, and it's one of the ones I actually listened to. So I have been doing a Goosebumps reread, but actually it's not a reread because I haven't read a lot of the Goosebumps, even though I owned them all as a kid. You can see my collection back there. It's this big stack. There's actually two stacks there, and there's my Goosebumps hat. But yeah, I have all the Goosebumps, and I had them since I was a kid, but I've only read a few, a very small handful, and this is one of them. So this will be a true reread. A lot of the other Goosebumps I've read this year have been first-time reads, actually, which is kind of crazy. But I've been enjoying every Goosebumps book that I have picked up so far. So I know this will be great, and I can't wait. All right, guys, and I know I told you that my main theme was summer, sharks, and slashers. But I have a little extra theme, a fourth theme that I'm throwing in there because of a special day that takes place during the month of August. And unfortunately, this fourth theme doesn't really go with the others as well in terms of alliteration. Like, it doesn't have an S in the beginning of the word. So it doesn't really, like, go and flow. So I didn't mention it in my main themes because this is really only going to be a book or two that will match in with this one. It's kind of a separate thing. So in case you're wondering what the special day is... August 13th is a Friday the 13th, and because I was born on a Friday the 13th, that's always very, very fun to celebrate for me. In fact, my family and I go out to dinner every Friday the 13th every year. So anytime it takes place during the year, we go out. However, there hasn't been any, really, in 2021. And August 13th, August Friday the 13th, is the only Friday the 13th for the rest of 2021. And I actually looked into 2022, and there's only one during 2022 as well. But in 2023, I just happened to get on this kick last night where I was looking up Friday the 13th and how many there were in a year. But 2023, there is at least two, and it falls in great months. So there's actually a Friday the 13th on my actual birthday in 2023. So it'll be Friday, January 13th, which was the actual day I was born on a Friday, January the 13th. So that will be in 2023. And also there'll be an October Friday the 13th in 2023. So that's something to look forward to. So I wanted to do a read that had something to do with 13. I didn't really want it to just be 13 tales because I actually do have a point horror book called 13, which is a collection of 13 stories, which would technically fit the theme. However, I wanted something more to do with the number 13, not just a collection of 13 separate stories. And that's the only thing to do with the number 13. So I did a little Googling and also I got some great suggestions, including a suggestion from my friend Dana here on YouTube. She said to check out the Warren the 13th books, which I've already ordered on Amazon. They look so cute. And on Amazon, it describes the art style like it's in the style of Edward Gorey. And if you guys know and like illustrations, Edward Gorey is amazing. Very gothic kind of illustrations, black and white, just really cool. And I would even describe it like kind of Tim Burton style. It's like in that vein where it looks like that style and it's got the number 13 in it. However, I think I'm going to save Warren the 13th for the Friday the 13th in 2022 because I actually have two other Friday the 13th type of books coming. Actually, they're really just 13 books that they don't mention the word Friday in them. But I ordered from Thrift Books, super cheap. I found a book called The 13th Warning by R.L. Stein, which I'm really excited about. It's a newer R.L. Stein book. I think it was released in the 2000s. That's fine with me. People say it's very thematic and it has a lot to do with 13. Like, there's a lot of elements in the story to do with the number 13 and, like, this 13th thing. Like, the kid is the 13th of a of a 13-kid family, so he's, like, the 13th kid in that family. That's kind of neat. So there, there's more to it than that, but from what I read from the synopsis, it sounds very cute, very fun, and like in the same vein of Goosebumps, you know. And then finally, I also ordered a book called The 13th by John Everson. And this one seems super bloody, 
I looked it up on Goodreads and it just sounds like it's a lot of fun and a little crazy. And so since I'm kind of doing bloody type of reads right now anyway, because slashers are pretty bloody usually, I'm excited to check out the 13th. Yeah! So that's my two 13 themed books. I'm definitely gonna get to the 13th. If I can fit in another, it'll be the R.L. Stein book, The 13th Warning. We'll see. But thank you, Dana, for Warren the 13th suggestion because I will s save that for another Friday the 13th and I've already ordered it. All right, now I said that was kind of the end, but I actually want to leave a spot for you guys to suggest something, especially something vintage or a great slasher. It doesn't have to be vintage uh, or a great summer read. If you want to suggest something that you'd love to see me review or even vlog, but that fits the criteria for the month of August that I'm trying to do the little theme, it could be 13, summer, shark, slash, or whatever. If it fits any of those themes, please suggest it in the comments below. It would mean a lot to me. And I really want to make content about stuff that you guys enjoy and like and want to hear me talk about. So, yes, I'm leaving it up to you guys. I'm leaving a spot open and I will make it a priority. Even if, if I have to eliminate something else, I will make your choice a priority. Especially if something gets like seconds and thirds in the comments. But, uh, you know, I can't... If I get a lot of suggestions, I won't be able to do all of them. But I will save whatever I get suggested and probably save it for another month if I don't get to it this month. So yes, yeah, suggest anything below, especially if it fits the themes. All right, guys, and I do want to thank you all for watching, but quickly before I go into my whole ending spiel, I do want to plug the upcoming video I have all about summer camp horror that I referenced earlier. One of the books I'll be talking about is Fat Camp by James Sabata. I'm super excited to discuss this because it surprised me. I thought I was going to dislike it, and it did start a little slow. It didn't bother me because it built character. I had one qualm with it, which I'll get into during my summer camp video. It's my one little pet peeve type of negative comment about the book. But overall, this was an awesome read. It was one of my favorite reads of the entire summer. And I do want to send you guys over to Elizabeth Sagewood's channel. She reviewed this in depth and she gave a great summary of the book and what plays out without giving away spoilers. And so I want to say, go check out her review. And then I'll also add in my thoughts during my actual summer camp video. But until then, because it'll be another week or two. Yeah, please go check out Elizabeth Sagewood's YouTube channel. I'll link it below. And I'll also link the specific video below too as well because it was really good. And I think her channel deserves more eyes. She's super nice and her voice is so calming. So if you guys like me and all the energy, but still like some YouTubers that have a more calming presence, because I know I'm like, bleh, bleh, bleh. like I'm like on, uh, on speed, but I'm really not. But I um, mean, people have said, is she on speed or something? Bleh just because I'm like excited and get into things. But if you like a more calm type of vibe, I think you should check out Elizabeth's channel because it's kind of the opposite of my vibe in terms of she's very eloquent, she's very calming and soothing, and I just love the way she talks about books. So please check her out. I appreciate you guys watching. I know I say this every video, but it's very true. I know your time is valuable and you choose to spend it with me. So thank you so, so very much. But I can't wait to see you guys again next time. And please consider leaving a like if you liked this YouTube video. It would really help out with the stupid analytics and algorithms. And I'd really, really, really appreciate it. But for this time though, that's it for me. That's all I have to say. And until next time, keep on killing it.